We were born for greatness. We're not nameless, we're not faceless. We were born for greatness. We're not nameless, we're not faceless. We were born for greatness. They say that I'm reckless because I'm relentless. They spit on my face and crush on my name and taking my life in vengeance. Yeah, you can try and blame us and try your type. Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the WWE Wrestling Talk Show with Reese Rock Jones and And we're here to present to you WWE's final Raw exclusive pay-per-view results Which was the Predictable Chamber, otherwise known as the Elimination Chamber Were the results as they came in. 
The police circuit had a pointless match with Lou Gallard and Carl Anderson defeating the Miz to Lazo Bodalis and Curtis Axel. But on the main card we opened up with the first ever women's elimination chamber match for the Raw Women's Championship. In which Alexa Bliss defended against Bailey, Mandy Rose, Mickey James, Sasha Banks, and Sonya Deville. The match began with Sonya Deville and Bailey in the ring. And as is just now, I believe it's every five minutes. A new a new person entered. The ent- entry number three was Mandy Rose, who just made history in the own right, in her own right. But and I'll get to that shortly. Entry number four was Sasha Banks. Entry number five from the pod was Mickey James, and luckily the final person to be. The least from the part was the champion, Alexa Bliss. Now, Mandy Rose made history in this match, but not in the way she wanted to, because she was the first one to be eliminated, courtesy of a bank statement from the Sasha Banks, which makes her the first person to be eliminated from the first ever women's Royal Rumble match. And the first person to be eliminated from the first ever women's elimination chamber match. Yeah, I don't think that's a record she wants to be reminded of in her later career. Next to go after Mandy Rose was Sonia Deville after Mickey James did a Rufus press off the top of a pod. When Mickey James was eliminated, courtesy of a Bailey to Bailey by, of course, Bailey. Next to be eliminated. Next to be eliminated, following a row up, was Bailey, which had to stand to the old rivalry of the summer last year of Sasha Banks and. Alexa Bliss. Alexa Bliss hit a top rope DDT onto Sasha Banks to pick up the free count and to successfully retain the Raw Women's Championship and will now head into WrestleMania to defend it. But against who remains to be uh, decided? Yes. Next, we moved on to the Raw Tag Team Championship match, in which the Bar, otherwise known as Cesaro and Seamus, would defend against Titus Worldwide in Titus O'Neil and Apollo. Yes. This now, how would you say this match went? I, w- I wouldn't call it memorable. No, I wouldn't either. In fact, you could argue that this entire pay-per-view, apart from the two Elimination Chamber matches, was kind of just an episode of Raw. Well, I'm really do mean that, folks. But in the end, it was a uh, super... White noise on Apollo, which uh, had Cesaro and Seamus retain the championships. Yes, not really a surprising outcome. No, I, I would hazard a guess that Cesaro and Seamus will probably keep the titles until pro- I will until probably, and I'm going to take a wild guess here. 
the authors of pain come up from NXT. Next, we uh, go on to uh, the second women's match, which also had WrestleMania side effects to it when Nia Jax went one on one with Asuka in a match that if in a match that uh, if Jax won, then she would be added to Asuka's championship match. WrestleMania. Now, how would we say this match would go? Well, this match was a match which was mostly, and I just said the word, mostly dominated by Nia Jax. But, but the moment But, uh, and, towards the, in the end of the match, Jax was going for a uh, power bomb, uh, but Asuka reversed it into a roll-up pinfall. However, after the match, Nia Jax tackled Asuka through the inside barricade by the timekeeper's area, which seems to be the choice when people go through barricades. Next, we had a match with two, with two people who belong in the asylum. It was the Eater of Worlds, Bray Wyatt, and the Delete Nations, Woken Matt Hardy. Shall we just cut straight to the point here? We've had this match several times, including the 25th anniversary of Raw in which Bray Wyatt won. But in the end... However, on this occasion, it was Broken Matt Hardy who was actually able to delete Bray Wyatt with a twist of fate. Which, realistically, now that I think about it, they should rename that uh, move with, uh, with this character to something like the Delete of Fate. <laughs> the Delete of Fate? I, I like that. Definitely send that to the WWE creator immediately. Before we go to the men's elimination chamber, there was a segment in between the two matches. Yes. In which Rowdy, Ronda, Rousey would be signing her WWE contract. Now here we had Raw General Manager Kurt Angle, the, the Commissioner of, of Raw, Stephanie McMahon, and WWE's Chief Operating Officer, Triple H. Who, who, of course, brag, brag Ronda Rousey about how amazing of an athlete Ronda Rousey is, which, of course, she is. Yes, absolutely. Before eventually, that angle said something. Right. And then, and then Ronda Rousey comes out, of course. Yes, of course. There was uh, in the contract. Which Ronda Rousey did not want. It was confirmed that there would be no special treatment, like there is for someone else from UFC. Brock Lesnar. <laughs> <laughs> but she she was confirmed to compete in her what well, would probably be her first match at WrestleMania. The match hasn't been hasn't been confirmed yet, but we have a strong idea of what it's going to be because of what happened during this contract signing and the next night on Raw. Yes. This we'll get to in this in a second. 
that before the contract was signed, Kurt Angle decided to stir the pot a little bit and bring up the incident of what happened last time Ronda Rousey was in a ring with Triple H and Stephanie McMahon at WrestleMania 31 with yours truly. In which, let's just say, Triple H got a, uh, was it a hip toss or one? And she nearly broke the arm of Stephanie McMahon. Yes. And then Kurt Kurt Angle went on to say that uh, Triple H and Stephanie would now be glad that they... uh, had Rousey on the roster so they could uh, manipulate her and, let's just say, get even. Yes, pretty much get even. And then as, as the tensions began to grow, Ronda Rousey did a, what was it, belly to belly suplex through the yep. table on Triple H. Which? And then Stephanie McMahon. Where's that to? And Stephanie McMahon made possibly the biggest mistake of her life. Yep, she slapped Ronda Rousey. Yes, the classic Stephanie McMahon slap in the face. But decided to go running before step before Wanda could do anything. However, on Raw Talk after the uh, show, Stephanie invited Wanda to the next episode of Raw because she wanted answers about what happened to Chip of Hate. Yes. Rousey basically demanded an apology from Stephanie McMahon, saying that she would not hesitate to rip her arm from the socket. And then Finn's she did apologise and then Finn's got a little bit more heated when uh, Triple H ended up pen- ended up punching Kurt Angle, which Teases us to the fact that the match of WrestleMania is going to be a mixed tag team match with Ronda Rousey teaming up with Kurt Angle to take on Triple H and Stephanie McMahon. Absolutely. I think that would be a WrestleMania worthy match. Absolutely. Yes, but uh, with with the actual foundation laid the WrestleMania three years ago, we would like to see Ronda and The Rock. Next and finally we had the men's elimination chamber match which because of the number of participants started out as a triple threat chamber match. Oh yes. This was Braun Strowman, Elias, Finn Balor, John Cena, Roman Reigns, Seth Rollins and The Miz. The match started off with The Miz, Seth Rollins and Finn Balor in the ring. After Finn first person to be let go from the pod was John Cena then we had Roman Reigns be let out then we had Braun Strowman let out and but, but it was already known that Elias was going to be the last one let out because he won the match a few weeks earlier on Raw. However, when Braun Strowman was let out, it became the Braun Strowman Chamber. It pretty much did. 
he was wiping out everyone left, right and centre. Miz tried to scale the pod to get away. Only for Strowman to climb up after him. It was almost like uh, a scene from King Kong. <laughs> with, the Empire, with the Empire State Building. No, we had a run, we had they had the Miz eliminated shortly after this with the running power slam. Yeah, the then we had a four on one sort of beat down of Unborn Strowman by John Cena, Finn Balor, Seth Rollins and Roman Reigns. Which resulted in a four man power, a four man shield power bomb in which, in which uh, Braun Strowman kicked out a two. And he knows how. Then we had an attitude adjustment in which Braun Strowman kicked out at one. Then we had a spear. And no, and no, we're not on about edge. And then we also had a curb stomp, or whatever he calls that move now. In Black Bond Strowman rolled out of the ring. Then we had the Kurigra outside of the ring. This kept Strowman down for a while. Enough time for. Elias to come into the match. Who, after Strowman got back up, was eliminated fairly quickly with another running power slam. Making it Braun Strowman's second elimination of the match. Then John Cena was caught after he jumped from one from one of the turnbuckles into a running power slam and pinned again by Braun Strowman. Making Strowman third elimination. Finn Balor was then a uh, victim of a running power slam and Braun Strowman's fourth elimination. And then things swing the other way. Um. Well. Then we had Seth Rollins. Well, we kind we kind of had a two on one shield gun up for a while, which didn't really go well. No. And then Seth Rollins went for the stomp again, only to be counted, only to be caught in a running power slam. It's Strowman's fifth um, elimination. So we were down to Roman Reigns and Braun Strowman. Yes. And they weren't at each other. Head back, left, right, and center. Roman Reigns hit, what was it, three Superman punches? Yes, three of them. And a spear, which it took three Superman punches and a spear, but Roman Reigns, as we suspected he was going to, picked up the victory. What? What they? We'll get to that in a second. What? Whilst the fans would be, well, I want to say pissed off, what they did was make Strowman look as strong as possible without actually winning the match. Which means, as it stands, and this is up for debate at the moment, yes. at WrestleMania, it will be Roman Reigns versus Brock Lesnar for the Universal Championship three years after we got this match at WrestleMania 31. However, this time there will be no briefcase casting. It will just be one on one. But will it? Will it? Wow. 
because apparently because there is a lot of people or some people are wondering whether this match is actually going to happen because the following night on Raw we were supposedly going to have a face to face confrontation with Lesnar and Roman Reigns. Yes, now there's some theories going around that uh, Brock Lesnar no-showing no was of a plan all along and uh, Roman Reigns coming out to do what was basically a shoot promo saying how Lesnar doesn't care about the business, he's just half of money, sit down in his ass for most of the year. Was was done was done in a way to get to some of the fans to cheer him because because he's going like likely going to be leaving soon and as a way to build heat for this match because let's face it other than uh, Roman Reigns winning a match there's no story going into this match just yet. But then there are other people saying that because of there was a photo of Lesnar with uh, UFC President Dana White that uh, Lesnar may not even get to WrestleMania. He may vacate the Universal Championship beforehand and that Braun Strowman it has been placed as a uh, fill-in if that ever happens. Well, Braun Strowman wasn't happy. No, he literally destroyed Roman Reigns and sent him through one of the pods. Which is like you said, Braun Strowman has been placed as a kind of replacement if Lesnar doesn't actually compete. Yes, yeah, so that brings us to an end for Elimination Chamber. Yes, but there was one other story coming out, coming out on Raw, because John Cena yeah. comes out on Raw after the Elimination Chamber to say that he's disappointed, he's, what he thought his road to WrestleMania was going to be the Royal Rumble. That didn't happen. He thought his road was going to be the Elimination Chamber. That didn't happen. Then he had to, then he was then he wanted to do something that he should have done a long time ago. Which is which is something that WWE should have done a long, long time ago. And lay down a WrestleMania challenge to the Undertaker. Now, some of you may be thinking, has John Cena lost his mind? However, some pe- people are saying, well, of course, not. some people want to see that match, some people don't. It all depends on whether Taker can still pull it off. But the promo went after the, after the challenge was laid down that John Cena has been told that that match, yet again, is impossible. And now we have a story breaking of by certain people saying that that is actually kind of true and that The Undertaker will not be working WrestleMania this year and that John Cena will be having a WrestleMania match with the returning Rey Mysterio who made a surprise appearance in the Royal Rumble match. Yes. Now, as much as I like Rey Mysterio, is John Cena versus Rey Mysterio really a WrestleMania quality match? Mm. Some people may say yes, some people may say no. However, on also here, John Cena stated that he was going to use his free agent status to go to SmackDown and to uh, 
have his Road of WrestleMania, to WrestleMania go through there, and SmackDown's exclusive pay-per-view, Fastlane, which takes place next Sunday, which we will bring you full details on next week. Until then, he's been Sean Manny Smith and he's been Lisa Lock Jones. And we will see you next week for the fast lane to WrestleMania. Until then.